Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about a very simple introduction to mission planning. Now, mission planning is where you can store a set of positions and altitudes and behaviors into a model like this. Uh, this is the one that I've been building through the Pixhawk 2020 series. I've done this and also put it into a fixed wing as well. And regardless of the kind of model that uh, things like Ardu plane, Ardu copter, Ardu sub, Ardu rover is in, you can upload what's called a mission and get it to fly, drive, or go underwater on its own. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics because this is one of the most common questions that I get is how do I do mission planning? Because although once you've seen it a couple of times, it becomes fairly obvious, if you've never been involved with it at all, it can seem a little bit overwhelming. So in this video, what we'll do is a very quick little example mission, show you how to set all that up, how to flash it onto the flight controller, how to activate that out of the field and show you the results. I'm going to be using Ben from 3DXR, so a big thank you to Ben because Ben is an expert at this. He uses autonomous missions like this for work, so things like surveying, mapping, those aerial constants, those kind of things. Uh, that's why things like Ardu Copter and Ardu Plane are so fantastic. Now, iNav does a limited subset of this. Things like iNav also do allow you to do a much more basic mission planning. But in terms of really high end, super locked in, uh, very customizable mission planning, uh, Ardu Copter, Ardu Plane, and all of those things, along with the Pixhook, is a pretty good way to go. So let's go over to Ben in a moment. He can create the mission, send it to me on an email. I'll then load the mission onto the model here, and then we'll go out to the field and fly it. This video series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go-to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner, or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T-Motor, ESCs, motors and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightwear and Bennywick LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS sensors, Pixhawk, large scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. So here we are on Skype talking to Ben at 3DXR. Now, for those of you that watch the channel a lot, you'll know that uh, this gentleman, Ben, is the guy that I go to. But I'm not sure about what I'm doing with Ardu Copter and Ardu Plane. Uh, ben flies autonomous missions and builds large UAV systems and resells all the kit like Pixhawk and other things that I use in my videos. Uh, but because Ben does this for a living, the kind of stuff that I'm, we're going to talk about in mission planning, the basic mission planning that we're talking about today, is absolute second nature to him. So a big thank you to Ben for putting aside this time today to do this little section. So Ben, over to you to create a, a simple little mission that you can send to me that I'm going to fly and to talk us through this part of the Mission Planner interface and talk about some of the gotchas that people tend to make when they first get into mission planning. Okay, so here we are in the latest version of Mission Planner, uh, 1.3.72. And you'll be familiar with the welcome screen, uh, the, the data view. And in order to plan a mission, we're going to go over to plan. What I've done here is I've set a home point of the, the sort of approximate takeoff location Lee's going to use when he does this test flight. Now, you'll, you'll have to do this when you first go onto the plan screen. You'll find it's zoomed into some other part of the world. So find your location, zoom in, and right-click set home here. And this is just going to stop the screen wandering as we plan our mission. Let's have a little look around some of the buttons we're going to use. So we'll start off in the top right. What I've done on here from the default is I've changed it to a hybrid map from the default satellite. Now, depending on where you're based in the world, you might find that there's a different mapping system. It gives you more up-to-date or higher resolution images. So we have some open street maps, Bing maps, 
all sort of maps you want and you can even upload custom maps if you were in a remote location uh, the next tabs we have are to load and save files now these are to load and save missions that you'd stored on your computer or removable media and below this these are the ones we're going to use when transferring a mission to the drone or reading a mission back from the drone and at the bottom left hand side this is where we'll start to see our list of waypoints and build up as we draw our mission a couple of things to point out here by default we'll be on relative altitude what that means is the height you take off from will be considered as zero and any height you enter when you're planning your waypoints will be relative to that so if you type in 15 meters that's relative to your takeoff height there's a couple of other options on this drop down such as absolute which is a, a gps altitude um, I'd advise you not to use that unless you know what you're doing. And there is terrain. This is something you come on to later on when you want to experiment with terrain following. That requires the terrain database to have been downloaded to your drone prior to making the flight. So you need either an internet connection in the field or to have pre-downloaded it. So let's stay at relative. We have our waypoint radius of two meters. So if you imagine a circle around the waypoint, it has to get within two meters of that to consider that waypoint complete. So let's just have a little look at our home point here. The first thing we're going to do is take off. So I can right click and take off. And it's going to ask us an altitude. So this is the altitude at which it considers takeoff to be complete. And it's going to move on to the next waypoint. Let's set this at 15 meters. Now takeoff hasn't put a point on the map because it's relative to your, your sort of updated home position. So it, it doesn't have a point. It, takes off where it is and goes straight up. So if we go to the flying field and we find out we're actually standing here, there's no mistake in takeoff. It will just update the home and it'll take off straight to 50 meters from wherever you stand. So we've got waypoint one. If I just click now, we'll get a waypoint number two. And it's dropped a default height here to 120 meters because we've got a setting here at 120. I'm just gonna delete that and for the purpose of this mission, all the heights are going to just be 50 meters. So by changing the default altitude there, every time I click, where our points are at 50 meters. If I want to remove some, I can use this X. So let's have a look and find a, a nice area where we can do a simple square and then initiate a return to home. So at the moment, we have one command. We have takeoff. At a height of 15 meters, it'll consider that complete, and then it will go to the next waypoint. So let's just say I put one here. And the behavior now would be the drone climbs to 15 meters, and it will diagonally go to the next waypoint. So we must make sure there's no obstacles <laughs> at about you know, 20, 30 meters um, here. So waypoint two. And what we see here is this small circle that is our two meter radius. And when the drone gets within here, it considers that waypoint complete and it'll head to the next. So if we were just to go straight across, and now once these waypoints are on, I can move them around. I can see I needed some trees, but these look very small. So I'll cross them, and we could drop a height down to say 30 meters over here. And we could do a RTL. And that again, that won't show up on the map because it doesn't have a position it completes waypoint five so when it enters a circle then it goes into rtl and this is where we have to know what our rtl height is if you'd set an rtl height so a return to launch height at 100 meters your drone's going to go up to 100 meters and then fly it home and land the default's 15 so what it will actually do is continue at its current height if you're above that 15 meters so it'll continue at 30 meters above your home point and descend down and land. So this is what a, a simple waypoint list looks like. We have a takeoff to 15 meters. We have a few waypoints at 50 meters, and then we have a return to launch where it will fly straight to the home point, descend, land, and disarm. You can make modifications to it at this stage. Um, and then what we would do is press right with the drone connected. What I can do now to send this to Lee I can save to a file and email Lee what will look like a text file. 
So the main thing to understand here is the behavior. So a common one that catches people out is setting, say, a low takeoff height of 10 meters, and they're standing next to a row of trees, and the next waypoint is beyond the trees, and it climbs diagonally and ends up in a tree. Um, so what you need to know is, in order to carry out a mission, we must arm the drone first in something like loiter, flick it into auto, and then it will take off and do the mission. Let's imagine we've took off, we've got to waypoint two, and then let's say we want to cancel, we want to we need to take back control. Simply putting it back into lighter mode will stop the mission, your drone will stay where it is in lighter, and you can bring it back, fly it around. If you put it back into auto mode after interrupting it, it will head where it was going. So it would, wherever it is when you go back into auto, in this case it would be going to waypoint three. So it would go straight towards waypoint three. So that might be a diagonal climb. It could be um, straight straight at it if you resume a mission that you've broken up. You can RTL in the middle of a mission, and that will interrupt it. It will take over it. The the first time you you do this, you should keep it simple. No elaborate survey grids, just simple square. We've got a couple of height changes here, and we've put in an RTL. This would be a, a really good little test mission. Maybe this field is really steep. So let's use one of the nice built-in features. Um, so I've right-clicked, brings up this beautiful menu, map tools, and I'm just gonna have a look at the elevation graph. So let's just bring this onto the screen here. We can see our waypoints numbered. And this blue line at the bottom, this is this is the terrain on the ground. This isn't gonna show you trees, mind. So if you did have a 50 meter tree, um, you're not going to see it. This is um, a sort of large-scale elevation map, so you, it will not show you buildings or trees, but it will give us an idea if there was, for example, a steep incline. So we've, we've kept the height, you know, on a smallish drone, 50 meters. It, it's going to be quite high, and we can see our climb, our way back, drop to 30, and then RTL. So the actual RTL section is not shown. That's that's one little trick. So here we are on my laptop here, and I've removed the props. I'm going to power the Pixhawk and plug it into the computer. Now we're going to upload that file that Ben has just emailed to me and get ready to go out and fly. So we need to make sure that we have both the file uploaded, the mission uploaded into the memory of the Pixhawk, and I also need to make sure that I have an auto flight mode so that I can tell the Pixhawk that that's what I want to do. So first of all, let's connect. I'll find the right COM port. Uh, that should be the one we're after. Make sure we're 115200 board rate. And there we are, we're connecting. And all of the information is coming down. Now we're gonna go into exactly the same screen that Ben was in. And we're gonna go then into plan and click on load file and navigate to the file that Ben sent me and click open and it'll ask me if you want to reset the home position uh, we'll say yes it hasn't got a home lock at the moment so it'll just drop the pin where ben put it so there it all is now i'm going to reduce the height a little bit because i'm going to be filming this using my hat cam uh, and so that's a little bit high i'm going to drop all these down to about 20 meters once I've done that, then it's time to put it into the Pixhawk. Now, it isn't going to save it into the SD card, so be aware of that. You can't just pull the SD card and put it into another uh, Pixhawk system and then copy the mission across. It's going to save it in the Pixhawk memory. That memory is persistent. It's going to live there until you delete it or put something else in the memory. So we're going to click on Save. And it's going to write it and then what i'm going to do i'm going to delete everything uh, get rid of all the waypoints and then click on load and that's going to read it back from the pixhawk memory it's a really handy check to make sure that it has actually gone across and that nothing weird has happened now you notice that the home location is now suddenly somewhere else and that's fine that's just because the gps has got a lock while it's sat here on the desk so it's just arbitrarily put the home location where i am now rather than where i'm going to fly but that's fine so the last thing we need to do is go into the mandatory settings into flight modes and set up one flight mode as auto because we need to select auto as the flight mode to have it all work and that means that the field i'll have it stabilize i'll arm it and then once it's armed i'll immediately flick it into auto and it will execute each of those waypoints in turn so now we've got all that set up it's time to go to the field and actually show you how this works 
So here I am at the field. First thing, of course, is to turn the radio on before we do anything else, and then just screw the GPS into position so that that's going to work okay. Now, the mission that's been uploaded to this is going to keep it relatively close in, and I've dropped the height for two reasons. One, I like to keep a very close eye on it for the first time you ever do a mission on a model like this. This is genuinely the first time we've done a mission. And I'm also going to recommend that you have some form of telemetry set. Now, I'm using the Yapu telemetry script on my radio here, and that's going to tell me exactly what's going on. There are lots of different options to connect to the model and to monitor it while it's flying. Check out the telemetry video in this Pixhawk 2020 series. But at this point, all I'm doing is I'm just waiting for the GPS to lock. And I'm also waiting for the GPS home location to be stored because we need that because that needs to be in the model so that we can fly back safely. Now, as soon as that's there, then we're ready to go. Now, I'm going to arm it in stabilized mode and then I'm going to flick immediately into auto and we're just going to follow it around. So let me arm it by holding the stick in the low right position. Now we're armed, raise the throttle just a fraction and click it straight into auto mode. And now we are fully autonomous. So I'm not going to touch anything. This is the mission that you've just seen created and uploaded onto the Pixhawk flying the model. So it's gonna to rise to the altitude and then make its way to the first waypoint. Now the nice thing about having telemetry on the radio, things like the Yapu script are actually gonna call out every time it reaches one of the waypoints. So there's the first one, so let's wait for the second one. Now, I'm keeping a very close eye on this. At any moment that I'm not happy with it, I'm gonna pop it back into one of the other modes or initiate a return to home and bring it back to me. But this seems to be behaving absolutely flawlessly, which is really good. Now, mission planning isn't something that's unique to Pixhawk. If you are using anything that runs mission planning, like the Durandal or the Pix, any other Pixhawk, or things like the Matek boards that run Ardu Copter and Ardu Pilot, this is going to work in the same way. And it can also do this with Ardu Plane. I'll probably do a separate video for Ardu Plane because there's a couple of other wrinkles. Now we're coming to the end of the mission here. And when it gets to the final position, it should initiate the return to home. So here it comes. Over the home location. And this is just like a normal return to home, just like I would have had if I'd have flipped the return to home mode switch. And it's gonna settle on the ground. When it does, it will then disable the props. So if this has been interesting, then stay tuned. Lots of other videos in the Pixhawk 2020 series. Links down below so you can find out all the cool stuff that you can do with this kind of technology. It's amazing what we can get this stuff to do. This is very basic mission planning that I'm showing here, but you can really go to town. So also check out the Big Boys Toys playlist where things like missions are created to do things like surveying. But now we're on the ground. We're all set. It's disarmed itself. I just need to unplug the battery, turn the radio off, and that is our first mission done. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.